Hi, this is Elliot Haspel, and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about crafting effective incentives for students, and this comes from a working paper from the National Bureau of Economic Research, and a group of researchers trying to sort of apply the lessons of psychology and behavioral economics to the classroom did a bunch of experiments in Chicago public schools to see what was the most effective way to incentivize student motivation. Now, a note to begin with is that there's obviously a difference between extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation, and there is some controversy and mixed feelings about the use of extrinsic motivation, of like literally dangling a reward in front of a student to try hard. Uh, and I think it's pretty universal that intrinsic motivation is sort of the ideal for a student to want to do something just because they really want to do it. What extrinsic motivation is a tool in any teacher's tool belt, and especially for tasks that already have low intrinsic motivation, uh, like say taking a standardized test, they can really be an effective way to improve student performance and truly student achievement and learning. So with that caveat, uh, let's get started. The researchers did a bunch of experiments and they found a few things. First of all, students are more motivated by what's known as loss aversion. What that means is that essentially all humans have a psychological principle by which we are more likely to want to not lose something we already have than we are to want to gain something we don't have already. And so in terms of an incentive, this means if you actually give students a reward up front and then say they can keep it if they meet a certain condition versus lose it if they don't, it's actually way more motivating than saying that they're going to be able to get something after they do something. So you can think about this in terms of behavioral motivations, right? If I give students a uh, hundred points, at the, say you're going to start off with a hundred points and every time you misbehave, I'm going to dock you a certain number of points versus I'm going to start you off, you know, zero points, but if you behave well, then you'll gain a certain number of points. Actually, the loss aversion one will be way more motivating to students because we attach to things as humans that we already have. Uh, so that's one way that you can craft a more effective incentive. Second, they found that younger students respond very well to non-monetary incentives, and what this means is that for a young student, an elementary school student, they're equally motivated by getting a little trophy, by getting, you know, a knick-knack, uh, some sort of small little reward. They don't actually need uh, money, whether that's, you know, actual money or, you know, more commonly in the elementary school classroom you might see a form of class money, a form of class currency. But actually, uh, you know, non-monetary things are equally motivating to younger students. Um, next, the immediacy of an incentive is important. Uh, what they found is that if students had to wait a long time to receive a reward, the motivational impact was almost nothing. Uh, and so, you know, you might say to students, you know, if you do this thing that we want you to do, if you achieve a certain grade, if you behave a certain way, then, you know, in three weeks we'll have some sort of, you know, popcorn party, it actually is going to be less motivating than if that popcorn party is happening on Friday. So um, this is, again, psychological. It's just the way that we're kind of wired and kids are wired is that it's hard to use something that's far in the future to be very motivating. And lastly, they found in these studies there was no evidence that these external rewards lowered intrinsic motivation. So again, for tasks where there already isn't much intrinsic motivation, like a test, um, the use of incentives doesn't appear to have any long-term negative impact, and actually the students who tried harder because of an incentive that was external did continue to do better uh, moving forward. And the impact of effective incentives is actually pretty high. In terms of student achievement on standardized tests, it is the equivalent of a 20% reduction in class size. Uh, so what we're talking about here with incentivizing students well is not some small, minor, kind of on the edge thing, but actually can have a significant impact on student motivation. So again, uh, the really takeaways here, loss aversion is a stronger motivator than gaining something that you want a younger students or will respond to almost any incentive. Uh, incentives should be immediate or in the short term. Uh, and really think about using external incentives when there's already something that there's a low intrinsic motivation to do anyway, um, because you're not going to damage intrinsic motivation that way. So thanks for watching and happy teaching.